Can we really have free energy that is surrounding us at all times? Thank you for watching the Shikama Live Show with your host, Shikama. I'm going to talk to you about some pretty technical things today in my video. I want you to keep up. And if you don't understand something, make sure you ask a question down below in the comment section. I'll be happy to answer you or direct you to a better explanation somewhere else. I will try and explain it in details. So sit back, relax. This might be a little bit long today. I'm going to talk about free energy. And I'm going to talk about a notion that anybody who tries to do research on superconductivity and super unquantifiable, they immediately start to discover free energy. And why is this? Because the theories that energy surround the universe, what we call air, what we call space, and what we call vacuum, is not air, space, nor vacuum. It's something that scientists are now termed the Higgs field. Think of it like like what this is water. It's like the Higgs field there are, that we know, everybody knows about the particles of atom. One particle is called an electron. So everybody's familiar with that, right? There's a more massive particle that we know of that is called a top quark. Everybody's familiar with the electron. The top quark is massive because it interacts with the Higgs field, more so than any other particles that we know about. So it is far more massive than the electron in that it interacts with the Higgs field. Think about it like this water consists of countless molecules of H2O. If you're thrown into water, you know that you are in water. The Higgs field is made up of countless numbers of Higgs boson. If you don't know what the Higgs boson, it might have, have no idea what it is. We are in the Higgs field. Like a fish doesn't know it's in water. All the fish knows is that it's in an environment a fish has no idea of what water is, assuming that fish aren't some sort of alien beings and that they have some sort of super intelligence and they just don't want to talk to us. But assuming that the world is as we think it is, fish are in water. They have no idea that they are in water. Think of it as a barracuda, which is very streamlined in water. As it moves through the water, it has very little interaction with the water and can zip through water at the top speed, a big fat man, a big fat hairy man getting into water and trying to swim interacts with the water a lot and can't zip around the water like a barracuda can. We all see that we are see in the movies and TV shows like that old 70s show, uh, what was it, Aquaman or something like that. And he could do his little flipping thing flip his body and he was a uh, part mermaid or something like that and he gets zipped through the water and that's because he doesn't interact with the water as much as electrons zip through the Higgs field because it doesn't interact with the Higgs field that much. You understand now the allegory? The top quark however does interact with the most Higgs field a lot and therefore it is massive. We can verify that the top quark is massive because we don't know what it is interacting with now when we get to the only way that we can know that the Higgs field even exists is because they see it in the interaction of particles like the top quark. When we get a superconductivity and you're doing studies on superconductivity, you notice that a field is around it changes and things like gravity is completely eliminated when it's in that superconductivity field. You can levitate objects in the field. And the reason that is is because electrons stop interacting with the object and go through the object and around the object when they start doing research on superconductivity and quantum levitation. They also notice that energy output by this is what I believe Nikola Tesla discovered and this is why he was put on ice. He wasn't put on ice because he's not that he wanted to do something like uh, destroy. It wasn't that he wanted to destroy what Edison had built. Edison, who stole most of Nikola Tesla's patents, it was that he discovered free energy. I'm reading an old script of mine that uh, I had to re-download and I'm trying to make sense of it. I don't know if you've ever tried to download a script, uh, but I'm literally editing 
the script as I talk. He invented the radio, but the Italian guy stole the patent before him. Again, the more stealing of patents, right? And he died pretty poor. It's the discovery free energy. And he said energy surrounds everything on the planet. Energy is in, in all of space. Now this guy, he was off, of course, a super genius and discovered this how many decades ago. And now when we're doing a test with the particle accelerator uh, at, uh, where's that place called? They're discovering it, and but don't think they can kill off all of the scientists that are involved with the super collider. They're discovering the Higgs boson and the Higgs field, discovered by, of course, Dr. Higgs, and named after him when they finally discovered what the Higgs boson is. They all called it lead god particle. I'm sorry, lead god particle? And why is this? It's because this particle assumed the to exist inside of our atmosphere all around us in space in a vacuum. There's nowhere that this particle does not exist. It is omnipresent, if you will. So what existed can exist in an atmosphere, exist inside the sun, existing like the earth. We're all a part of it. We're all, it surrounds us. We're in it like a fish. We just don't know it. This is the thing that they have been trying to stop since Nikola Tesla, his papers. And his papers were confiscated and burned, redacted, his laboratory, uh, laboratory taken down and burned down, and deconstructed, removed with no sign. This once we discovered the God part of this, this entire notion of oil, electricity, natural gas, this entire phenomena and the way our society works will be over. It'll be completely over. As we know, it will be the Armageddon that we think it is that we keep predicting. You know that the Mayans or the Aztecs or, or the Jehovah Witness keep predicting as the end of the world. It will be the end of the world once we discover the Higgs boson. It will mean that you will be levitating across the cityscape. Your car will be levitating. It will be running off of the energy that surrounds us. and let me just try and explain why we don't have hoverboards, why we don't have floating cities, why we don't have flying cars. I want to talk to you about scarcity. Does everybody know what scarcity means? Scarcity, of course, is the idea that an object is scarce. So let's say sand is not scarce. It is trillions upon trillions of particles all on the beaches around surrounding all of the the bodies on earth next to a body of water sand diamonds are like sand they are everywhere on every single plot of life why it's made out of carbon is carbon scarce no we are a carbon based animal this this world is carbon based there's other Worlds that are uh, gem based or something like that. <laughs> I don't know what you call it. I'm sorry, it's slipping my mind. Anyway, diamonds, they pretend is scarce. Any logical person just sitting down just for a second would understand that diamonds cannot be scarce. They're made out of carbon. Carbon is not scarce. And they say, oh, well, it takes millions of years to produce a diamond. Are you sure about that? It takes a lot of pressure and heat to produce a, a man-made diamond, but uh, I believe in Africa they literally had people, hired people to sit and sift through the dirt to find diamonds. It's not scarce, but they pretend that it is a scarce item, and so then they charge you $20,000 for a ring made with a diamond on top. Everything has a scarcity to it. You can't make that many blenders yes you can you can make if we wanted to this entire country could go into the blender making production and we could produce trillions of blenders so blenders should not be three hundred dollars four hundred seven hundred dollars huh right oh well it's uh, it takes time and uh outside of the labor cost and the material cost blender should not be seven hundred dollars no way no how but they're $700 blenders. There are, what, $1,000 shoes. 
thousand dollar shoes, tennis shoes. We know for a fact it does not take anything more to produce the ten uh, the ten dollar shoe than the thousand dollar shoe. Same exact material, nothing involved in the material. You're literally paying paying for a name brand. Material cost, labor cost, same as the ten dollar shoe, but it's all based on scarcity. And because of this scarcity. And because of the people who are making money, pretending things are scarce and charging what they're charging, we don't have flying cars, we don't have hoverboards, we don't have floating cities. You can see it on, look up superconductivity, and I would assume that uh, YouTube will have it next to this video, and you will see floating objects when they're talking about uh, superconductivity approaching uh, absolute zero. Thank you all for watching. Uh, leave all your questions below in discussions. Thank you.